Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Abhi, humble obeisances, all glories to Sula Prabhupada. Thank you for joining the call and to enlighten us. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sula Prabhupada. Yeah, thank you for joining the call. Um, Good Maharaj, uh, you have any specific verse like uh, you like me to share yeah, today? Look, we began yesterday a series of verses from the 11th canto. Oh, chapter is, 3, text number 21, 11-3-21. Okay. These verses talk about the qualifications and the uh, activities of a spiritual master, the qualifications, the activities and characters of the disciple. This is a first in a series of about six or seven verses on the subject. 21, not 22. Okay, good much. I'll go back. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is 21 is a very long purport. We did part of the purport tomorrow, yesterday. So we'll continue on the purport, but we'll start by going through the verse again. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tasman Guru Papadeta Jigyasu Sreya Uttamam Sabde Parecha Nishnatam Brahma Upasraya Srayam Translation Therefore, any person who serious desires real happiness must seek out a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter him by initiation. The qualification of a bona fide guru is that he has realized the conclusions of the scripture by deliberation and is able to convince others of these conclusions. Such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme God had leaving aside all material considerations should be understood to be bona fide spiritual masters. So go down the page and you know, I'll We'll go get to the part where we left off yesterday. So go down the page nice and carefully. And, uh, keep going. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So we, we did this part. Okay, we did this one. Yeah, we, we did this verse too. Okay, we did this paragraph. Okay, so we, we stopped here. So I'll stop right here. So it describes in the previous, the position of a spiritual master, the importance of a spiritual master who is not a spiritual master. Mm -hmm. And then... It goes on to say, if one does not become a lover of Krishna, his connection with Krishna takes place indirectly through the illusionary potency of the Lord. So what this says is that no one can be disconnected with Krishna. But if one does not connect with Krishna in the, in the way that is meant to be connected through devotion, that connection remains, but it's done through the illusionary potency. And therefore, it covers Krishna. At the same time, the illusionary potency is a one of Krishna's energy. So people are connected through Krishna, through his material energy, which is not a very pleasant way to connect with the Supreme Lord because the material energy has different ways to exhibit itself He's even causing suffering, misery, disappointment, and ultimately, um, it uh, forces one to take another birth. 
And so uh, one wants to be connected with Krishna through devotion, not through his external focus. The idea that one can attract the Supreme Lord through mere gymnastics or foolish speculation on the absolute truth is certain of Prakriti of Maya. So Prabhupada refers to gymnastics as the people who simply do the yoga and simply by uh, different postures, they think that this is actually spiritual. But it's part of a broader process of spirituality known as the Astanga Yoga system, where asana is one of them. But asana is not independent. It, it, it must correlate with the other seven parts, and it's a step-by-step -step process. But aside from that, the Astanga Yoga system, as explained by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, is not possible to be performed in this age of Kali because it requires great abilities, it requires spiritual strength, and at the same time, it has to be done in an environment which is completely conducive to the activities. So therefore, none of these things are available. Therefore, Astanga Yoga, which Hatha Yoga is a part of it, is not a way, a recommended process in this age. One who is connected to, to Krishna through his external illusionary potency can serve only as a material master to connect his so-called disciples to the same illusionary energy. The Prabhupada is just showing that, you know, you have to be connected either to the material energy or the spiritual energy. So um, one who's connected through the external energy will lead people in that same way. On the other hand, Bhagavad Gita says, Mahatmanas to Mampartha, Daiva Prakriti Astata, Bhajantiya. Uh, I think you're not paying attention. <laughs> Mahatmanas to Mamparta, Daivi Prakriti Asrita, Bhajanti Aniya Manaso, Jiva Bhutati Mahavyayam. Those who are actually great souls have surrendered to the internal potency of the Lord and can similarly connect others to the internal pleasure giving potency. So here's talking about the spiritual masters. Mahatma, great soul, is described in the Bhagavad Gita as Vasudev Sarvamiti Samahatma. One who knows Krishna to be the cause of all causes, such great person is very rare. It is to such a spiritual master who has reached the mature understanding that Vasudev is everything. Vasudev refers to as the son of Vasudev, who is Krishna himself. That one must surrender to. According to Narada Muni, Yo Vidvansa Guru Hari, such a great soul is considered the external manifestation of Krishna himself. Krishna states this in some. So Krishna manifests himself as his representative of himself in the form of the spiritual master. So the spiritual master is different and non-different from Krishna because he represents Krishna fully. Although he is not Krishna, he is the person who we worship in order to connect with Krishna. So therefore we're worshiping Krishna through the instructions and guidance of the spiritual master. Therefore, he is called the external manifestation of Krishna himself. Acharya mam vijaniya nava manyeta karhichit nan martya buriya sutyeta sarva deva mayo guruhu. One should know the acharya to be myself. This is confirmed in the previous statement and never disrespect him in any way. One should not envy him, thinking him an ordinary man, for he is the representation, representative of the demigods. So sometimes we see the spiritual master acts in an ordinary way, but if we see his activities as being, as him being ordinary, then, it, then this is seeing in the wrong way, and one cannot benefit from that relationship. One should know the charya, to be myself, that's a very powerful statement coming from Krishna himself. And just like we don't disrespect God, we do, we have that same attitude 
towards the spiritual master. Not to envy him, thinking him ordinary, although he may go to the doctor to get well, he may also uh, do things that we do, but he is not ordinary. He is to be seen and worshipped as Krishna himself. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, if a spiritual master cannot destroy his disciples' doubts by spiritual knowledge, the disciple will gradually become despondent in spiritual life. Because a bogus guru cannot actually give Krishna to the disciple according to the principle of raso varjam raso pyas pya, the disciple will again become attracted to material happiness. In other words, raso varjam raso pyas pya means giving him them a tired taste. That's what that statement refers to. One can give up the lower taste by getting a higher taste, rasavarjam. Disciple will again become attracted to material happiness, not having achieved the bliss of Krishna's association. Such a weak disciple of a weak spiritual master will gradually become hopeless and discouraged in his attempt at self-realization. and will again become fascinated by the temptations of illusion, such as women, money, and so-called intellectuality based on speculation and imagination. So here we're seeing uh, one who takes the position of a spiritual master but cannot deliver his disciples from the cycle of birth and death, nor can give them the knowledge they need to progress on the path of devotional service. Will be, will, um, his disciple will become weak and ultimately uh, the spiritual master will fall down. Further symptoms of a bona fide spiritual master are given in the Upadek um, Samrita as follows. Vachu Vegam, Manasokrota Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udarapasta Vegam, Eta Vegam, Yogvishai, Eta Jira, Sarvam Apiman Pritivim Sashishyat. This is a very important verse. It's by Srila Rupa Goswami. A sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, and the urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals, that person is qualified to make disciples all over the world. So here is some of the characteristics that are required for a person to take the position of a spiritual master. They, not, they have to control the mind and senses and not be controlled by the mind and senses. They have to dictate what they need and what they don't need in their day-to-day -day life, both in the mental and in the physical capacity. We, we see in the material world, we see something we like to eat and we just eat more than we should eat. And then therefore we are controlled by the tongue. The belly wants to get full, so we fill it up as much as we can. We're controlled by the urge of the belly. The genitals are pushing for, for release. Therefore, when we see the object, we become, dis we become attracted or infatuated or disturbed. So if these characteristics are there, then that person cannot take the position of a spiritual master. The mind's demands. The mind says, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. You have to be able to discriminate what is, what is beneficial and what is not beneficial for one's spiritual progress. The urge to speak. Sometimes we see people cannot control the urge to speak. They start speaking and then they can't even stop. <laughs> they, just go, they just go on and on and on and speak. And what they say is simply what they could say in three or four words takes them 150 words to say it. So they're controlled by this power of speech, which forces one to speak more and more and more. Therefore, it says in the Shastras that truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. And so learning how to speak by speaking short, concise, to the point. 
and controlling that, not being controlled by speech. I have to speak. Just like sometimes we say people, two people come into a room together and the conversation has to go on because people feel awkward if they don't say something. So, but that's, that, that's giving in to the urge to speak. So this is the most difficult thing is to control the tongue. And therefore it says that um, uh, we, we, we chant that prayer every day and then before we take prashadam. The tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. Tongue has two functions, speaking and tasting. And one has to learn through the power of their own mind and senses, control, and as they progress in spiritual life, to control to speak, the speech, to say, to sp not to speak when there's no need to speak, and to speak when there is a need to speak. Another part of this is that when there is a, ne a need to speak and you don't speak, that means one is controlled by the urge not to speak, which is the same thing. So one who knows when to speak and how to speak, according to the situation, he can control that urge. The mind's demands, the actions of anger. When desires are frustrated and one becomes unhappy and sometimes anger enters in. And uh, then one becomes angry and sometimes one tries to control the anger and that causes one and of course it's good to control it but that causes one to lose their focus in life so these six characteristics three for the mind three for the three for the physical part of the body are meant to be these are called urges the word is pushing. In the translation, it's called begum. Begum means urges or pushings. So the body and mind will push, and people will also push you in that direction. One who is controlled by these things cannot become a spiritual master. And Prabhupada well, ends the statement as in as a commentary by. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, simply to confirm what is being said, to emphasize what is being said, Upasrayasrayam Kroda Lobhyas Sasi Bhutam. A bona fide spiritual master cannot be under the control of ordinary anger, greed, and lust. According to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, one who has understood the futility of material existence can approach a bona fide spiritual master. So in other words, there are many people who approach the bona fide spiritual master, but the actual ones who are really approaching the bona fide spiritual master are those who understand, at least theoretically, the futility of trying to become happy through material activities and the nature of material existence, how it frustrates any ability to become happy. So this is, the, this is a foundation. People may approach the spiritual master for other reasons, but unless that characteristic is there or that principle is there, that they are fed up with material existence, they will not be able to fully take advantage of the instructions given by the spiritual master. This is a prerequisite we have to understand for spiritual progress. Understanding that in this material world, there is no happiness. It's not there is a little happiness, there is no happiness. What goes on happiness, goes on as happiness and sometimes is given credit for that is a, simply a relief from pain of material existence and that's all and the two previous verses the futility of earthly and heavenly sense gratification have been described now the conclusion is that one who has understood this should approach a bona fide spiritual master so here again the emphasis is given 
Um, not only is there no happiness in this realm, but the scriptures make the point, nowhere in the material world is there happiness. Even sense gratification in the higher planets is explained to by Prabodhananda Saraswati as analogous to uh, pushpa akai, pushpayate, akash pushpayate. Akash, you know, higher planets, higher realms. Pushpayate means, akash actually means sky. And pushpayate means flowers in the sky. So do flowers grow in the sky? No. Another analogy is used, do does or, horses have eggs? No. So heavenly sense gratification is compared to flowers that describe that grow in the sky or the eggs of a horse. In other words, it's simply imagination. And so and, and so as it's mentioned here, uh, previous discussions have shown the futility of this. Now, people in general don't believe this. Maybe even some of you who are listening now don't fully understand this principle that there's no happiness in the material world. Well, one of the indication is even if there is some source of pleasure, it is temporary. Because it's temporary, it ends. And because it ends, whatever happiness that one comes about is no longer available, and therefore it, it becomes a source of suffering. When you're attached to something and it's no longer there, you suffer. So the idea is not to become attached to uh, anything in this material world, but develop attachment for the activities of devotional service. Here, now, now the conclusion is that one who has understood these principles as mentioned above should approach a bona fide spiritual master. The bona fide spiritual master broadcasts broadcast the sound vibration from the spiritual planets. He's echoing the words of the Lord. The inhabitants of the spiritual planets, headed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, are certainly not deaf and dumb. They are in constant communication through unlimited transcendental bliss and knowledge. So one who's connected in devotional service with the process in pure activity can connect with the higher realms of existence and receive transmission from that higher realm. Therefore, it says the bona fide spiritual master is the external manifestation of super soul. He's speaking exactly what Krishna is saying within the heart. Therefore, he's called antaryami or external manifestation of super soul. The bona fide spiritual master can transmit the sound vibration of bliss and knowledge to his disciple, just as radio broadcasts Monday news. A bona fide guru broadcasts the news from Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. This is confirmed by Naratam Das Thakur, Golokera Premadan Harinam Shankirtan. The spiritual master also transmits to the disciple the holy name of Krishna, which is coming from Goloka, as it says here, Goloka Premadan, that the mercy of Krishna Prem is coming from Goloka through this Harinam Sankirtan, which is non-different than Krishna himself. So one associates with Krishna through the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. The bona fide guru informs that his disciple that every living entity is qualitatively one with the Supreme Lord, but quantitatively different, and thus engages the disciple in loving service to the Lord. Because the living entity is qualitatively one with the Lord and is part of the Lord, so that qualitative oneness doesn't mean that one is one in an absolute sense of the definition, the quantitative aspect is 
different. And that means there is, the, the analogy is just like a drop in the ocean. The drop also contains the same characteristics of the ocean. It has salt, it has liquidity, but the drop is a drop. You can't swim in the drop, you can swim in the ocean. But at the same time, one, both are part of the same, but one is part and one is the whole. For Krishna is the supreme whole, the living entities are part of that whole, therefore qualitatively the same, quantitatively different. And that relationship is eternally one in service. In other words, to understand that relationship, one has to engage in devotional service. So Krishna is served and we are servant. He is master, we are his servant. So it is our duty to serve the Supreme Lord in devotion. And that is our relationship with Krishna. One is accepting service and another one is giving service. Now, if we take that principle in another way, Krishna is also serving his devotee by accepting the service that they give him. He doesn't have to accept our service, but in order to reciprocate our effort to serve him, he, he accepts it. And therefore we connect with him. And in that connection, we feel free from material existence, the suffering that comes. We feel transcendental pleasure and we awaken transcendental knowledge. These are the characteristics that come by way of connecting with Krishna through the process of devotional service. According to Bhakti I'm sorry, according to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, even though one may have the good fortune to accept a bona fide hala for qualified guru, if one maintains a taste for food of activities or mental speculation, one's advancement will be checked. Fruit of activities means I perform an activity and I am attached to getting the benefit of the results of that activity. That is the mode of passion. Mental speculation means to try to understand knowledge simply by the power of the mind, not, with, not through the knowledge coming from guru or shastra. And the last sentence, but if a serious student surrenders to the bona fide spiritual master, there is absolutely no impediment to the transmission of perfect knowledge. So here is the, the point, surrender. So it's a word. So what does the word surrender mean? Surrender is not simply a word that ends in itself, that I give up. And that the word is somewhat deceptive. What it means is that I agree to follow your instructions. And I agree to, uh, to learn how to apply those instructions in my activities of serving the Lord. So that is surrender, like that. And to do that, we have to be attentive. If we're not attentive, we can't understand both the instructions and the process of surrender. So being attentive means to be staying in tune with the instructions coming through the Lord, from the Lord, through instructions of the bona fide spiritual master. Janmi Janmi Prabhupita say, Devi, what is that verse? Chakshudan Diloye, Janmi Janmi. Prabhu say, Divya Gyan Ride Prakasita, Prema Bhakti Yoho Hoite Avya Vinase Yoti Gahiana Rasari. So Prabhupada uses the word serious student. So he's not saying that some students are not serious and some students are. He actually is saying that. But what he's saying is that one who is serious can get the benefit and not one who's not serious. So it requires to be serious, and serious means attentive. How can we become attentive? Well, if our minds are, are so much absorbed in material activities, it's hard or even impossible to become attentive 
to the instructions of the spiritual master. Therefore, we have to prioritize the instructions of the spiritual master coming from Krishna and become attentive to that. And then everything becomes easy and clear because the spiritual master doesn't try to speak in a bewildering way, try to present something that the student cannot understand. Even if he does, there's always opportunities for clarification through questions. Uh, he makes it quite simple, but if the student is not serious to surrender to the attentiveness that is needed in order to understand how to surrender, then it says that there's absolutely no, there's, there's, and then there's no transmission of perfect knowledge. But the sentence says here, one who does, then there's no impediment to transmission of perfect knowledge and bliss and devotional service. So there will be impediments if we are not serious and seriousness is shown by attentiveness and that to become attentive to our chanting, to become attentive to what we read, to become attentive in the hearing process, to be attentive to whatever we do, not uh, spaced out. Spaced out means I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm somewhere else. That's spaced out. And then, we have to practice becoming spaced in by, by, by filling that space that is called the mind's cavity with the instructions of the spiritual master coming from Krishna. Now, this is a very, very important verse and, Shila, and the purport given by the, the disciples of Srila Prabhupada is quite extensive in explaining this verse and this is only a small part of that particular explanation, but we get an insight of what is a qualified spiritual master and how to take advantage of the, the presence and shelter of a spiritual master. So these are some important parts here. <clears throat> okay, so we can stop there and see if there's any questions or comments coming from devotees in general. Yeah, Hare Krishna very much. Thank you so much for the wonderful class uh, explaining about how to uh, not get attracted to the material energy and get attracted to devotional service. And thank you for explaining the qualifications of spiritual master. There's no way you cannot be attracted to the material energy. We all are attracted to the material energy. There's mm -hmm. only one way you cannot become attracted to the material energy. You have to get attracted to Krishna. Krishna. Okay. You can't say, I don't want to be attracted to the material energy and not be attracted to Krishna. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Attraction okay. means, or this means attraction to something higher, giving up the lower form of attraction and accepting a higher form of attraction. If you're hungry and you want food and someone puts a chapati in front of you on your plate, and says, here, here's a nice chapati, and there's no ghee on it. It's been made three hours ago. But you're hungry. You say, well, at least it's something to eat. But then someone comes with a nice feast, and you push the chapati aside and go for the feast. So you easily give up the lower form of taste, and you go for the higher form. That's the only way we can give up material life. There's no way you can replace it simply by negation simply by negating something that you it doesn't, doesn't fit in because the mind will gravitate back to that again, unless you fill it with something higher. Therefore, that verse, Visayan vinivartante nihrasya dehinam raso varjam raso pyasyat param drisva nivartante. Only when you get a higher taste can you give up the lower taste. Practice giving up the lower taste while you're trying to develop the higher taste. But if you fall, you, if you fall back to the lower taste, that is natural until that higher taste becomes fixed. Then there's no more higher, there's no more falling back. Then it becomes easy, and one sees what they were formerly attracted to in the material world as something very, uh, what we say, undesirable something 
repugnant, something disgusting. It even takes the form of disgust that, oh, how was I ever attracted to that? It's so uh, unattractive. That comes with the higher taste. And Krishna is the higher taste. Yes, Kurmash. Yes, that's uh, very nice. Yeah, we should have that higher taste. Then only we can leave the lower modes. As lower modes are very natural to attract. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, devotees, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, please go ahead. Raj Prabhu, you have a question? Please go ahead. Hey, Krishna, thank you very much. Hey, Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself. All glories to all devotees present here. Maharaj, I have a, a comment this time. A couple of weeks ago, you were responding to a question by Sri Devi Mataji. And while you were responding to her, you mentioned a book by Stephen Knapp, The Prophecies of the Kali Yuga Age. And uh, we all feel comfortable, we all kind of feel, think we feel comfortable in the material world, even though we know about all the, all the horrible aspects of it. But when I read this book, oh my God, it really slaps you around the face so many times, see, laying out how horrible this material world is and in the future how absolutely dreadful it will be for anyone and it gives you a big push saying don't wait for tomorrow don't wait for next year get more serious from now from this moment because you don't have time to waste it really gives you a push Maharaj so I, I really appreciate Sri Devi Mataji for asking you the question and I really appreciate your answer and uh, and steering us towards that book. No glories to uh, Sri Nandanandana, Stephen Knapp, who put it together. Yeah, Prabhupada used to say, Kali Yuga is only going to get worse. Don't come back. Finish up in this life. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, I posted a daily drop. I sent it out to Radha Bhakti today. If you read that daily drop, she may post it tomorrow or maybe the next day. And it kind of answers your question. Not question, but it helps to fortify your comment. <laughs> I won't say what it is. I'll leave you to read it. Yeah, we, we have to come to the understanding that we have nothing to do with this material world. Nothing. <laughs> but because we have a material body, that's the connection. But the scriptures say to have a material body is an anachronism. It's, not, it's foreign to the soul's existence. And so, what we have to understand, there's a higher realm of existence. It's called the spiritual world, where life is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of varieties of blissful experiences. That is our birthright. And that, is our, that is in line with our nature as pure spiritual entities. This material world is a prison. It's called... We call it Durga Dham. The word Durga is the name for the external energy of the Lord. And the word Man, Man, Mansi, close your, close your uh, yeah. thing, Mansi. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the word Durga, Dur means fort and ga and, and ga means to go or dur, go dur also means difficult 
and ga means to go. It's difficult to get out of the material world. It's called Durga Dam, a fort. If you're locked into a fort, you're locked up pretty tight. So this world is called Durga Dam, but there is Durga Dam and there's Devi Dam, and then there's Mahesh Dam, and then there's Hari Dam. Hari Dam is the spiritual world. Mahesh Dam is the world of Lord Shiva, which is a separate existence between the two realms. And then, uh, and then uh, Hari Dam is the spiritual world. So well, we belong in the spiritual world because we're spiritual. <laughs> That's our nature. That's our existence. Well, here we are. So what does it mean to be in this material world? It means to act in such a way as to extricate ourselves from those things that are keeping us in this material world. And the, the, the easiest way is to become attached to Krishna, to hear about Krishna, to chant the glories of Krishna, to speak about Krishna, to uh, worship Krishna, to offer your respects to Krishna, to become Krishna conscious. Consciousness of Krishna sim simply is, is a self-definition. It means well, I'm practicing Krishna consciousness. What does it mean to be conscious of Krishna? <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> it's so simple. So we're transforming our, our, our consciousness from consciousness of Maya to consciousness of Krishna. And when we become fully Krishna conscious, that consciousness will take us back to our home, spiritual world. Until then, we have to continue to cycle, to uh, rotate in the cycle of birth and death. Maya Ravase, Kacho Beshe, Kacho Habubu Bubai, Dijit Krishna Das, Hey Vishwash, Kolana Dukanai. Bhakti Vinod is saying, Ah, oh, the living entity, he's being sometimes in the higher planets, sometimes in the lower planets, sometimes in the medium planets, sometimes in this species of life, sometimes in that species of life. We think, well, I'm in a human form. And we may also think I've never been in any other form. No. <laughs> your human existence is such a small part of your overall material existence. If you could see your whole material existence, you will see that you've been in so many species of life. And so why do we consider this particular life so important and so valuable? The only value and importance it has is that it's a way out of the cycle of birth and death. It's a way back to Krishna. That's the advantage of the human form of life. And the more you are fixed in the intelligent aspect of devotional service, the faster you can get out of this place. Now, some of us like it here. <laughs> we think, ah, it's not so bad. I got my kids. I got my husband. I got my job. You know, people like me. You know, I got my hobbies. And I'm helping other people. You know, you know it's not so bad. But then again, when you're put into a situation of disease and debilitation, then you start to think, oh, my God, this place is horrible. <laughs> so we identify with the realm, the material realm, according to what we're experiencing at that particular time. So if we're happy, we think, well, it's not so bad. If we're not happy, we understand, yeah, it's not, it's not, bad. It's not really good at all. But overall, when you see the big picture, you understand that anything in this material world leads to suffering and ultimately to death, to death, because the final, the final act that we perform is death. And in other words, we have to leave this material body. So when we understand all of these principles, we think, is there a place that I don't have to die? 
Is there a place that I can fulfill my desires and be happy? Is there a place where, you know, I don't have to go to school to learn things? I know things automatically. <laughs> because when you're when you grow up, you're dumb, you're stupid. You have to go to school to learn things. But the, the soul is chit. The soul chit means full of knowledge. It has nothing to learn. It is self, it is self-illuminated by its own existence. But when we get material body, then we act on that level, and then we have to compromise our spiritual position and accept something that is not our nature and struggle to try to make it happen, and then eventually lose it in the end anyway. <laughs> so this is the material. So you might say, well, there is some happiness here. You know, I have my husband, I have my son, I have my daughter, I have my kids, you know, like that. So, so concessionary statements are made in the scriptures. It says, yes, there is some happiness here, but the happiness is a drop. Our nature is ananda. That means that we want happiness all the time and we want unlimited happiness. That's our nature. We've been relegated or conditioned to think that uh, contrary to them. That's due to the situation we find ourselves in. It's like a person who is in jail and says, well, here I am in jail. I just got to make the best of it. Well, you don't belong in jail. Get out. <laughs> then you won't have to make the best use of this bad situation. That's the material world. <laughs> so we're trying to find happiness in these these little particles of trinkets that are thrown onto us every once in a while in the form of society, uh, what is it called? Society and love, family society and love. So yeah, the Acharyas say, yeah, there's happiness, but it's a drop. If you're in the desert and you're thirsty and I hand you a drop of water, you're gonna consider me your enemy. <laughs> because that drop's gonna only make you more thirsty. You need a reservoir of water. So while you're in the desert, you're hunting for that reservoir and you want that reservoir so bad. And because you want it so bad, you actually imagine it's there. That's called a mirage. But what is a mirage? Take it from the material point. The sun reflects itself off the sand. And due to that reflection, a pool of water appears within our mind. And we think, oh, there's what I'm looking for. But then again, when you run towards it, what do you get? You get more sand. That's what, this is not there. So that's Maya. Maya means what is not. What appears to be something which is not, that's Maya. So this, so Krishna has arranged this material world in such a place in such a way that we don't stay here. He's made it miserable so we can get out. <laughs> if, it's, if it was a nice place, then we wouldn't find any impetus to go back to Godhead. So he makes it miserable. <laughs> and that's the three modes of material nature. <laughs> and that's his compassion. So either you take the instructions and accept, accept it, or you take the punishment and learn from it, learn the same thing in that way, that this material world is what it is. Dukalayam, Asashvatam. Anitya, Asubha. It's temporary, it's miserable. So the misery is also temporary, but it can constantly comes. So although it's miserably temporary, the, te the misery is constant because it comes and goes in different forms, but it's always miserable. You might say, well, this person is dying of a heart attack and that person died of natural death. Well, they both died. <laughs> so what's the difference? <laughs> There's no difference. So that's the material world. You might say one kind of suffering is not as bad as the other. Well, if you want to, if you want to see it that way, then you might use that analogy. Yeah, I'm suffering in this way, and that person's suffering in that way. That way is worse than what I'm suffering, so I'm not so bad off. 
although I'm suffering. <laughs> but the fact is you're suffering. That's the reality. So that's the material world. So enter into the spiritual world while you're in the material world through the process of pure devotional service. This is the way out even while you're in. You can be you can be happy even while you live in this body, even when you take the Krishna consciousness. You can be knowledgeable even when you're in this body, if you seriously apply yourself in Krishna consciousness. You can be freedom from the material miseries in this world when you apply yourself seriously in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga, devotional service is so powerful that is not relegated to time, place, and circumstance, or candidate. Anyone, everyone has the birthright to become Krishna conscious because we are all spiritual principal beings. And when we take to that, then we can actually find happiness even while we are here. And if we experience any difficulties on the material level, they're insignificant. They're just like, you know, just like once in a while you get a mosquito bite. So the bite becomes painful. But if you wait a little while, the pain of the bite goes away. And it's like you never had it. So we might experience a little difficulties while we're in the material world practicing Krishna consciousness. But they're insignificant compared to the suffering that goes on in this material world. And people really suffer. We don't really, once you take the devotional service, you can't experience, or maybe even not even empathize with how much people have suffered. The only way you can is when if you had that ex experience yourself and you somehow recall that. The people in the material world are always suffering and they have to convince themselves they're happy. That's one other part of the suffering. Because if they don't convince themselves they're happy or convince themselves that they will be happy in the future, they can't go on in life. It's not possible. So devotional service is so direct that even in this material world, you can be happy. As Prahlad Maharaj says, I'm seeing this material world as happy. He's not feeling any of the difficulties that come by way of living in the material world. Because spiritual life is transcendental. We use that word, but it, dental means material and transcend means to rise above, rise above the material, transcendental. That means outside of the three modes of material nature. And that's available for everyone and anyone who takes this process seriously. So it's nice you read that book <laughs> and it gives you a more insight of the what Srila Prabhupada is saying. Prabhupada is saying the same thing, but when it's put into a condensed form and it's spelled out in a very clear way, uh, you know, it kind of kind of hits you right, right, right in the intelligence and it's, it becomes clear. So that's what this literature is about. It's giving knowledge, it's giving freedom, it's giving a way out of the material world. Vrindavan Das Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Oh. I hope your health is good and your health is okay now. Yes, yes, Guru. It was just like cold and a sore throat and fever. It's completely okay. Every, everybody says nowadays when you get sick, it's only COVID. It doesn't matter how, whatever sickness you have, it's coronavirus. So remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, even it's not for now. <laughs> for me. Even, if you, even if you trip and fall and you break your leg, <laughs> It was coronavirus that made you fall. So remember that this is this is this is absolute knowledge coming from the absolute realm of Maya. <laughs> so 
So when people say, well, he's sick, he's got coronavirus, I think, hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> This is true, Guru Maharaj. It has become like an untouchable decision. <laughs> But, so, <laughs> thanks, Guru Maharaj, for today's class, Guru Maharaj. It's uh, lots of learning, actually, from class. And a uh, few, especially, uh, and uh, I would say four came out more strongly for me. Uh, one, uh, being attentive to our service. Uh, surrender to our spiritual master uh, third association and fourth uh, focusing on uh, higher taste seriously uh, that's like uh, devotional service to please krishna so that's i thought like are the key ingredients for us to uh, make our life successful so all these in one way looks very simple but still many times it appears too difficult in this material world uh, guru maharaj so how to really overcome all these challenges and make progress daru sanga saru sanga association with the devotees it makes the process easy and doable for anyone we have to create that, these these sanghas of, of the devotees that's why I'll give you an example we preach in different ways in order to inspire people to accept association so in time in, in some of that preaching we give some kind of formulas to bring about sadhu sangha the so one senior devotee he preaches in such a way when he goes into a particular area that there are many devotees in that area most of them are families obviously he says well you know there are 30 days in the month and so every family one family can take one day of the month and have a program and then for 30 days you have 30 programs by 30 different families and then the whole month you have opportunities for association somewhere within your environment So if we could do that then there would be programs everywhere available. And it doesn't even have to be 30 families, you might even say 26 because four of the days we could go to the temple on the on the weekends and the other rest of the times we could go to each other's house. And then you would only have to cook the evening meal. The ladies would only have to cook once a month. <laughs> and then there would be prashad so you see the power of community the power of association it transforms everything into a wonderful experience when everyone is working in that capacity and so that takes some work and it takes some cooperation obviously but that's also part of krishna consciousness to organize ourselves around uh, associating with the devotees so we can hear chant and serve in that association but we get attached to our little house and we don't want to leave it so think about that formula it's practical too it's not something that is not doable if you're near a temple then you can also see how often temple programs are being offered and if you find yourself a distance from the temple then home programs are more more appropriate to your situation but if we don't take association with the devotees in a regular way you know we'll struggle in our to understand to serve Okay, so it's important, and it doesn't have to be senior devotees. It could be devotees in general. We give support to each other. Think about that little formula: every of every grihastha family taking one day a month and having that many programs. 
or even if you did it in the half a month, say you had 14 families or even 12 families, then every other, you know, twice a month, you could have a program at your house and the rest of the time at other people's houses. So evening time is good for chanting, evening time is good for association with others and taking prasadam. Thank you, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a practical statement to your practical answer to your question. That's all. I mean, there's other ways to respond to your question, but I thought you know the practical way seems to be the most doable way. Association with devotees. I mean, there's so many programs you can do. You can have different topics for discussion every night. You can center the discussion around on the needs that you're struggling with in, in family life, at the same time trying to practice Krishna consciousness. Yeah, uh, Krishna consciousness is more easily execute, executed in a communal way than it is in simply an individual or nuclear family way. You develop friendships, develop relationships. I mean, as I'm talking from the ideal platform, you know, maybe not, not everybody's ideal, but the idea is there. Think about the idea. And we have to somehow or other arrange to associate more often centered around Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I agree. Um, uh, that yes, more and more association, and that's why we like uh, have here Friday satsang, Sunday temple programs. That's minimum like eight days, and then one or two days normally in our devotees' home programs and week. So that makes good. But like one thing which normally helps me, Guru Maharaj, is hearing. So when I am hearing and focusing more on hearing attentively, that really makes my consciousness more. I would say it's humble, more submissive, peaceful, um, peaceful also. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing transcendental knowledge coming from scripture or guru, it just elevates the consciousness. The process of hearing is really powerful. Okay. Thank you. I'm going, to skip Sri, I'm going to skip Sri Devi for a minute and go to Sukhavaha because she never gets a chance to ask a question. So. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Is all glory to Srila Prabhupada and all glory to you, Lotus Feet. Thank you so much for lovely class and thank you for giving me chance to uh, say something. Maharaj, I don't want to be offensive, but you know, uh, on the point you said that association of um, devotees sometimes some devote I don't know how to put it in the words but the, their behavior puts you off and I've seen so many other devotees um, going off Krishna consciousness and feeling bad about other devotees behavior how do you go about that way because you know when you try to associate there are so many conflicts comes up basically and then people yeah, get that, like well, the bodies have to learn how to behave. <laughs> I know, but how do you make them understand that? Because there are some well, of them are the, senior devotees as well, Maharaj. Well, devotees means one who carries the qualities of a devotee, not simply one who has a name. Prabhupada would say, when someone would speak about uh, maybe another spiritual person, Prabhupada would say, well, what is his character? Now, there's certain outstanding characteristic traits that indicate a devotee. 
The devotee, by nature, the first thing it's mentioned is kind to all, to others. Kindness is the, one of the main principles. Uh, he's, he likes, he or she likes to serve others. A devotee doesn't find fault with others. These are some of the important qualities that a devotee should carry. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasizes that one particularly, not to find fault. So when we find that, we should also, when we find that there are people like that, we should invite them. They shouldn't be invited back. And we should associate with those devotees who are friendly by nature. Well, that's the main quality, the devotee is friendly. It's very difficult, Guru Maharaj, to get an association of those devotees because they are so busy. Well, Prabhupada never liked the idea that things are difficult. When people say it's difficult, Prabhupada said, yeah, but somehow do it. <laughs> The word difficult doesn't fit into Krishna consciousness jargon so much. We use it, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, difficult, sure. Sometimes it's difficult to chant your rounds, but do it. It's difficult to be humble, but practice it. So if we can't do face-to-face, -face, we can do virtual at least, isn't it? You sound like you're, you're drowning in an ocean of sorrow over there. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I'm just trying to Sukhavara. find out the solution. <laughs> Sukhavara, come to Mayapur. Yeah, I want to actually, you know. <laughs> it's just the circumstances at the moment are not suitable. But yeah, as soon as I, I, can, I can get out of this, I will definitely be with you, Sri Devi Mataji. I really, really want to be there. <laughs> Yeah, bring your, your, you have a wonderful daughter. She's like one of the most nicest persons I ever met. She's involved with Kirtan. So, I know. <laughs> yeah, and so don't stop complaining. <laughs> I'm not complaining, bro. I'm, not, I'm asking about other devotees who is facing that problem. And I'm trying to explain that devotee, my my good friend, and I, I, I can see her going away from Krishna consciousness just because she had bad experience. So I'm just trying to understand how can I make her understand that, like, you know, not everybody's the same. Be so, an ideal example for what you want other people to be. Yeah, that's what that's what she says. There. Okay, you're thinking, but not everybody is like you. And I, I said, no, but at least you can think that any one person is there, then you can find more, you know, but I, it's I'm finding it a bit difficult. But yeah, thank you for guidance. Guru. I will I will make I will be working on that. Definitely. People who make excuses for their wrong behavior are not worthy to associate with. Okay. They should apologize for their wrong behavior, not make excuses for it. Mm. Okay. That's a devotee. A devotee may act wrongly or do something wrong, but he's mm. sorry mm. and apologizes for it, seeks forgiveness. Mm. Not that, well, what you see is what you get. That's the way I am. Take it or leave it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Not Actually, that is so true, Guru Mara. That is so true. What you what you think you get it as well. So many times I've seen that. So yeah, yeah. That, that, that's that's just material. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. If you are thinking that all oh everybody is bad, I think you know you come into the association of people who are bad only. But if you think that no, there are good people, then you you do you do find good people. So. I, I don't know how to change people, but anyways, that's that's one of those things. But yeah, I'm happy. I, I've got loads of good people around me, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, don't give up. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not. I'm still, uh, we are still doing uh, virtual sanghas and stuff, and uh, we are trying to organize the home programs now. So we are in the process of doing the home programs now, going from virtual to home programs. So yeah. yeah. Be proactive, you know. Yes. If you see something negative, either work to change it or start something different. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
Hare Krishna. Uh, Remember your name. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Always. One who gives happiness to others. That's what your name means. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'm trying. I'm 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 working on that very, very hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, Namrata, question. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. So, uh, Maharaj, I was just uh, very much attracted with the one thing you mentioned today that uh, although the class was entirely wonderful, but one thing really caught me was um, that you, you, pro you progress uh, when you uh, get a higher taste uh, and not through the negation. So this is something what I have also personally experienced. And uh, this is one takeaway which I, I would like to share with people also. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So Maharaj, yesterday we were, uh, we were singing, uh, we were having kirtan at our place and uh, there was a kirtan about this higher taste. Uh, it was in Gujarati, but uh, would you mind if I, uh, uh, if I just say uh, two, three lines of those uh, kirtan? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, then you have to translate it for me too. Oh yes, definitely, Maharaj. I'll do that. <laughs> so uh, this this is my mother's kirtan book, and she has been noting all this uh, kirtan right from you know her young age. So this this kirtan is from that book. So I'm singing it, Maharaj. Um, बोल मा बोल मा बोल मारे राधा कृष्णा वीना बिजू बोल मारे चांदा सूरज नो तेज तजीने आगिया संगाते प्रीत जोड़ मारे राधा कृष्णा वीना का सो बोल मारे बोल मा बोल मा बोल मारे राधा कृष्ण वीना कसु बोल मारे सो महाराज दिस इज बोल मा बोल मा बोल मारे राधा कृष्ण वीना बिजू बोल मारे सो डोंट स्पीक एनीथिंग एक्सेप्ट यू नो द टॉक्स ऑफ राधा कृष्ण सो दिस इज व्हाट इज सेइंग then um, it says chanda suraj nu tej tajine reject uh, if if you are rejecting the uh, tej means the brightness of uh, sun and the moon and uh, you are associating with the uh, you know uh, with the with the Darkness. with the tej with the tej of candlelight uh, candlelight it, mataji you are associating with candlelight instead of the sunlight no uh, uh, agya is the firefly <laughs> so you you are getting caught with the firefly so uh, uh, reject the taste of a flyer a firefly and uh, uh, take the taste of uh, the moon and the sun which are much much more brighter so uh, this is uh, what it's saying there's a lot a uh, lot more but this is a nice piece in which i uh, which i was singing yesterday and we got a topic with a higher taste today so i just wanted to share with the, you and yeah, the god thank you that was really nice bol yama bol yama bol ma bol ma bol ma re radha krishna vina kasu bol ma re Ah, so nice. And you can <laughs> dance. That's that's dancing music. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. We have a kirtan every day uh, in the evening time for 15-20 minutes. So. Good. Next time I come, I'll come and take part. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely, Maharaj. <laughs> that's Maharaj. nice. That, you know, the traditional songs coming from the different uh, cultures glorifying the Lord are so deep in devotion. 
Yes, Maharaj. In in even today in the uh, villages, I think in a lot of villages in India, especially I know about Gujarat, but I'm sure this is in all over India that uh, you know, uh, in the villages they they get over uh, at eight o'clock around and they just go to, go off to sleep. So uh, before that time, maybe eight o'clock uh, or you know around that time, they do some kirtan. And then they go off to sleep. So women of uh, uh, surroundings just gather and do some kirtan, and then they go off to sleep. And so, they dream of Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so the, this, there's still many villages like that. So it's nice. Yeah. You know, um, the the bad luck is that we just associate with those villages in uh, in vacation time when we have vacations for. You know, from the children's uh, schooling and all. So, but yeah, they still have that problem. Good, continue, and every once in a while, sing for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hey. Mataji, you have a beautiful voice, Mataji. You got such a beautiful voice. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank nice. you Mataji. That's very beautiful. Thank you. And we saved the best for last. Sri Devi. Okay. <laughs> Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for such a powerful class today. It jerked me away. You know, it was like, Jeev Jago, get up. What are you doing? Kind of a class. So... <laughs> Yeah, we we need to hear that because uh, if we're not reminded who we are and where we are and what we're supposed to do, um, Maya is very enchanting. Maya can take us away from Krishna very easy. So we have to be reminded all the time. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I really uh, just thinking to myself, I don't know what question I asked and what it triggered in Raj Prabhu that he got that book, but he has developed some sense of urgency. I want some of that too myself. And I'm really praying that somehow or the other, I get association of my God family and that we all come together. Maybe they'll all come to Mayapur Dham and we can all, you know, be together and do sanghas and sing bhajans and so on. What Damrata said really reminded me of my own upbringing. Every evening, my mother would light lamps and then she would make us all sit down, three of us, and she would teach us songs. Every evening without fail, for half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe one hour, we'd be singing songs one after the other, different bhajans, different songs in glorification. Of course, it was all, you know, Krishna and uh, Shiva and Ganesh. And, but it was somewhat devotional in that sense that we were, you know, sitting and we were singing glories of uh, the Lord sometimes and also demigods also. But that was a ritual. Every evening that used to happen. And today's children, cell phones, tablets, TV, this thing, that thing, that's their only uh, entertain. I mean, absorption. So that's one thing I was thinking that maybe now that I'm here, maybe I can gather kids of the building and try and do something like that instead of moping by myself waiting for my god family to come you can, yeah the, where you can start what they call a weekly bhajan sangha where everyone gets together and you sing bhajans you go through the bhajans of the acharyas someone can also read the translations and then give a few comments on that i did i i have done that from time to time in different places some of these bhajans are so deep. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, Srila Narutam Dasta Kaur's bhajans. Sura Bhakata Charana Reino Bhajana Anukula Bhakata Seva Parama Siri Primana Anukula. That's a beautiful bhajan. Suda Bhakata Charana Reno, the lotus feet of the, the dust from the lotus feet of the pure souls is, is my food. <laughs> it's my substance. 
It's my nourishment. That's one beautiful bhajan. There's so many beautiful bhajans we sing every day. I mean, uh, my favorite one is Yasomati Nandana, Raja Bharanagara, Gokula Ranjana Khan, just the names of Krishna and Vrindavan. I love to sing that particular bhajan. All it is is Krishna and his different leelas. So then, and then the, bha the bhajans by the acharyas like Naratam Das Thakur is. Hari Hari Vipale Janamal Gainu Manusana Janma Paya Radha Krishna Navadiya Janiya Sunya Pisangi O Loka Premadana Hari Nam Sankirtan Ratin Jan Milokena Upar Dina Hina Krishna Dina Hina Chatta Chila Hari Nama Udarila Tar Shakshi Majagai and Madai Beautiful Vajans deep in philosophical principles and devotion. So sweet. Yeah, we used to do that more often. It's something that, that should be revived more around our society. Just having bhajans. <laughs> and, I mean, we have, we have hundreds of bhajans available. <laughs> Here yes, I am in Govardhan Echo. Uh, Govardhan Echo Village, they have created Sriji Mandir as a replica. And next to Sriji Mandir is Man Mandir. Man Mandir was also a place of Radharani's pastimes. And every night in Man Mandir, they sing bhajans in the local Brijabasi language. Really nice. It's sweet. I can hear it. I don't understand it, but it's really sweet. <laughs> I'm really trying hard to gain association of devotees here, Guru Maharaj, trying to plug in somewhere to see where I can, you know, plug in and get some association. And that's, uh, I think, something I need to work on instead of trying to be a lone ranger and struggling alone. Well, you have Mahaprabhu there. And Mana, you have, uh, there's uh, Hari Kirtan is also there. There are many devotees you can connect with. And there's a lot of programs going on. I think there's one Bhajan night by, uh, what's her name? Uh, something Seva. She's in the Grihasta enclave over there. Forgot her whole name, something Seva. I think she does kirtan night every every once a week. Yes, Guru Maharaj. The question of becoming proactive, waking up and trying to you know, you know, getting my act together. That would be a nice service, Raj. Sometimes they do that. They take Bollywood, uh, Bollywood themes, and we connect it to Krishna consciousness. Some of the mantras we, some of the Hare Krishna mantras, have the, the melodies are actually coming from Bollywood movies. <laughs> some of them, a few of them, not many. Brett. You have your hand up. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, thank you for the class. I was reflecting on, on the purport when, when Srila Prabhupada said, you know, how so, some people, you know, over speak. They, they elaborate themselves too much. They speak 100 words when really we can get our point across with just very few words. So I'm trying to sum up my question, um, but Maharaj, I have, um, me and another devotee at the Harrisburg Temple um, have been teaching a youth class ranging from ages like 14 to 18. Um, and this week we're giving a class on compassion, authentic compassion, um, more so in being empathetic towards the non-devotee. 
I just wanted to know if I can ask you a question in regards to that and also um, share an experience at our temple in Harrisburg that we've had recently with, you know, new newcomers to the temple who, you know, some of these children may think of as non-devotees. Yeah, yeah. Do you have do you have sort you have source material for your presentation? Um we've been we've been going off um a lot of lectures from you Maharaj and then lectures from Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj as well on authentic compassion. And then yeah, the other devotee is is more so on the Sastra side. I've been just getting lectures together for the youth um to present to them as well. Um but then mm -hmm. as well like sharing sharing in our experiences, Maharaj. Because one thing me and this devotee discuss, and we've also discussed with Mother Anasu, is we see that, you know, some of our youth who are born in a Krishna consciousness, and I've heard from other shikshas, um, they may be, you know, stuck in this mold, where we hear that devotees live in this bubble. Um, and as we've been going out in Sankirtan, we started going out on Sankirtan, finally, with our Harrisburg temple. You know, some of the children have discussed it. Well, the youth, I shouldn't call them children, you know, they are, they are coming of age, they're going off to college, so that's why it's been so urgent for us to discuss with them, you know, they're going to be more so into Maya, they're going to be away from the temple, how to navigate that, and we've seen, that, like I said, when we go out on San Kirtan, um, they've shared that they're hesitant, hesitant to speak with the non-devotee sometimes. Um, so my question, Mara, is just how can we, how can we, um, really show them how to be compassionate for the non-devotee and understand that the non-devotee is still in Maya just as us um, and still has that, that, that constitutional position to want to enjoy life. Um, and I just wanted to give an example from our temple. You know, we, we understand that we are to just continue to serve the non-devotee and, and Krishna will reciprocate and show us how to continue in our compassion um, so we had a new a new member join our our temple recently, um, and like all of us, he came with sufferings. Distress was a reason he came to Krishna consciousness, um, and we just began serving his family. His, he confided in us um, that his wife had cancer, so we've been cooking meals for his family, and the children have seen that reciprocation. And I feel like that's something to share with them and drive the ticket home. Um, and with that, you know, that devotee has also helped us back. He's become more inclined to, for devotional service within the temple. Um, so Maharaj, my question ultimately is how, what is the best way to navigate with this youth who may be growing, you know, in this bubble? How can we, you know, get them to look past that and see that, you know, the non-devotee, even prior to coming to Krishna consciousness or hearing about Srila Prabhupada, may have had, you know, this inclination for devotional service. And we see the moment they enter the temple and, and the devotees, you know, serve them, then that loving exchange is reciprocated. So how do we get to you? To you're trying to implant knowledge and compassion into people who are just learning about Krishna consciousness. So mm. when they're in the secular world, they can also give it to others. Well, that's a basically all. You know, it, it's a it's a process. Krishna consciousness cannot be artificially performed. It comes naturally through the development of consciousness through both association and service. So as they grow, they will also understand more of the the principles that govern character and activity. So um, best to just to work on them and, and try to inspire them more in their practice of Krishna consciousness. Help them to chant more, chant better, to uh, hear the classes and to inspire their questions accordingly as they hear to, to, so they can learn deeper the different points. Um, you can't really tell new people to be compassionate. <laughs> It's just they're learning how to practice Krishna consciousness. So they, they need the medicine. You can't ask them to be the doctors already. <laughs> they, they're, they're in the process of getting the medicine. And so therefore, it's not that 
they can share whatever they experience with people in general. But um, if you try, if you just try to instruct them with knowledge, it's not going to work. Because knowledge is transformative, and unless unless they have to actually transform, yeah, nothing changes. So just just try to help them as much as they can understand the process and engage in the process. The process itself develops all of the good qualities that we're looking for. It's all there. There's a verse in the Bhagavatam that explains that one who's engaged in devotional service has all good qualities. But these people are not engaged in devotional service. They're just touching the water to getting a feel from it. So there, there is where they have to hear more and more. So basically emphasize the process of hearing more and more. Read the books, come to the lectures, ask your questions, take part in the kirtans. Um, they'll grow if they do that. And if they somehow or other share it with others, it'll be, it'll be a nice experience. But they're students. Like they're only students. They're learning. They can't become mm -hmm. teachers all of a sudden. You know. Madhu Nasuya told me, Maharaj, that, you know, this topic of compassion with our youth will definitely have to be an ongoing thing. They serve in their own way, you know, they partake in kirtan, but they've confided in us that, you know, they're just beginning the process of chanting themselves, just beginning the process of hearing, just beginning the process of, of reading. So do you find will, like the benefit? Mm -hmm. They will see compassion in a material way. That's all. Mm. That's all that we're able to understand. Real compassion is to give transcendental knowledge, mm. because transcendental knowledge you can solve your own problems. You have knowledge. You have the tools by which you can overcome the difficulties. That's real compassion. But they'll see compassion as as the what what goes on in the material world as being you know what welfare work. That has some element of compassion, but it doesn't solve the problem. Real, real compassion, Maharaj, is it, is it the, the concern for the other's sufferings and own happiness? Well, these are elements of compassion, and what are you going to do to relieve them? And the answer is knowledge. Yeah, it, just to feel is not enough. You have to do something. Mm. You have to give them something. Give them knowledge mm. by which they can solve their own problems, rise above that, and then automatically they'll take that out in their own life. And Maharaj, would it be would it be that we can we can strengthen our own knowledge with the youth by by confiding in our in our own experiences and how Krishna consciousness has helped us, you know, activate yeah. compassion in the sufferings and happiness yeah. as well in our life. Personal example is very powerful. Ajay Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. There's two books, one by Satcharup Maharaj called Compassion, and there's one by my god sister whose name is Sukabaha. She's also written a book on compassion. Both of them are excellent. And that's the title of the books, Compassion. So but each one either one of them, especially the one by uh, by uh, <clears throat> Satrup Maharaj, who's been around for about 30 years. It's a great book on compassion. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be compassionate to all of you and let you go. <laughs> so, you, so you can do something else and then feel happy that you can get other things done today also. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, we are, we are happy with you at the moment, so don't go, please. <laughs> The only place of happiness is at your lotus feet, Guru Maharaj. There's no other place of happiness. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, 
Yeah, people tell me that, but you know, I don't believe them. <laughs> so, uh, if I have anything that beneficial to offer, it's what Srila Prabhupada is giving to all of us. Prabhupada is the source. Prabhupada is the reservoir of compassion and transcendental knowledge. And Sachibama, you're just joining us now, just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> I just switched on the camera, Guru Maharaj. Now Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Oh, you've been, here all, you've been here all a while? Yes, Guru Maharaj. While I was okay. cooking the Rajpur, Guru Maharaj. Okay, good. Thank you for coming. But we have no, to say you, goodbye. We have to just say goodbye because um, we are uh, well into darkness where I am right now. <laughs> so we're moving towards the end of the day. So thank you very much. And um, tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow I travel. Um, as I mentioned to Srimati, there is a chance I can do the class, but it's really hard to say because there's some work that needs to be done in the afternoon and I don't know if I'll be finished in time. And so uh, I think she might be knows and she'll have someone ready to speak. Yeah. Otherwise, if I can be there, we'll continue with these series of verses. These are really powerful verses. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, very much for Thank the you very much. Thank, Thank you, so Suda. Much. Yes. Please forgive me. Forgive me for getting a little bit strong on you, but oh, no, good um, yeah. yeah. I'm also learning. Forgive me, please, if I'm a little bit inattentive. Yeah. Thank you so much for okay. the beautiful Thank class you. and appreciation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you, devotees. Thank you so much for your association. Hare Krishna. Thank you, sir. Thank you for hosting. Thank you. And the God.